Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Hi everyone. I really hope that you guys stay at home, stay healthy and stay happy. Yeah? Um, but what to do? Life must go on. Like I said earlier, today is uh, already 13th of April 2020. So we need to start our class wherever whatever happened so today i'm going to start about chapter four yeah we just finished chapter one to chapter three and today we are going to learn about chapter four for foreign exchange markets like i said earlier this chapter is the heart of the international finance management because you need to know all the substance inside for you to complete the whole syllabus basically for this foreign exchange market you will learn uh, the pillars of this course for example you will learn about what is the spot market what is the forward market bid as spread direct quotation indirect quotation what is a bid price what is the ask price and how you are going to learn to do a cross rate without further ado Let's check uh, basically the outline of this chapter. We are going to learn the factors that determine the exchange rate, functions and structure of your foreign exchange market. You learn about spot and a forward market and also the cross rate. Okay, now we proceed to next slide. Okay, next slide. Uh, exchange rate determinants which is the factors that determine the exchange rate we have a five points to elaborate the determinants of the exchange rate the first three points you need to support with the illustration which is relative inflation rates relative interest rate relative income levels and the rest of the two points which is a government policy or government control and also expectation just a brief explanation okay so we proceed to the first point, which is a relative inflation rates. Okay, the first point is a relative inflation rates. We want to see what happened when Malaysia having a very high inflation rates. Okay, we, we want to compare ringgit Malaysia against US dollar. So if you guys can see here, if you guys can see here, the horizontal line is a quantity of US dollar and the vertical lines represent the value of US dollar in ringgit Malaysia which is the ringgit Malaysia value what happened to the ringgit Malaysia value when inflation rates high for Malaysia okay so when Malaysia having a very high inflation rate for example from uh, 3% to 4% it's it shows that Malaysian buy more import goods and services from the outside. They, because why 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 this thing happen? Because Malaysian have a lot of money, so they 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 can afford to buy the import goods and services. So we compare it with the US US product. So for example, our Malaysian buy things uh, by product from U US market so they need to convert ringgit Malaysia with the US dollar why we need to convert ringgit Malaysia with US dollar because when we buy things when we buy goods from US market we, we need to convert our ringgit we need to pay it in the US dollar so by doing that we are demanding for more USD instead of U.S. citizen demanding our ringgit Malaysia. So when we demand for more USD, you will see here the demand curve shift to the right. What happened to the supply demand? Supply demand is actually represent the supply of U.S. dollar to our market. Why the supply demand shift to the left? Because the U.S. citizen not demanding our ringgit Malaysia because they are not buy our products. So when this thing happened, when the inflation rate high in Malaysia, 
so you will see you will see at the points of d1 and s1 like this what happened to ringgit malaysia ringgit malaysia is 2.5 against one us dollar but when it shift from d1 to d2 yeah d1 to d2 so we'll see d2 and s2 what happened to ringgit malaysia from 2.5 against USD, it would be 3.0 against US dollar. So what happened to Ringgit Malaysia? We need more 0 0.5 Ringgit Malaysia to convert with one US dollar. It shows that our Ringgit Malaysia is depreciated by 0 0.5 against US dollar. So as a conclusion, when the inflation rate high, In Malaysia, so our ringgit value will drop or will depreciate. Okay, understood? Alright, guys. Um, we proceed to the second point, which is a relative interest rate. Now, we are talking about the lending rate. What happened to the ringgit Malaysia value when our government reduced the lending rate? Yeah. When the government reduced the lending rate, for example, the BR, the base rate, so Malaysian not interested to borrow from the outside or the from the international bank. Why we should borrow from the international bank if our domestic or local bank can offer us a better rate? So that's why you can see here the demand curve for, for USD shift to the left. Why shift to the left? Because Malaysian not interested to, to demand for US dollar because we are not converting any RM with a US dollar. So what happened to supply curve? Supply curve shift to the right. Why shift to the right? Not only Malaysian interested to borrow from a Malaysian market, the US citizen also interested to borrow from our local bank. So that's why they are demanding for more ringgit Malaysia and supply US dollar a lot in our market. Yeah, that's why the supply curve shift to the right. So now you can see what happened to the performance of Ringgit Malaysia against US dollar when our lending rate reduced. So you see here from D1 S1, okay, what happened to Ringgit Malaysia? 2.5 again US dollar. But when it moved from D2 to S2, it's 2.00 against USD. So, in order for us to convert RM with the USD from 2.5, now we only get 2.00 against USD. It's much cheaper by 0 0.5. Yeah. So, as a conclusion, when the government reduced the lending or the borrowing rate, so it actually can improve our performance of Ringgit Malaysia against the foreign currency. Okay, Alhamdulillah, I really hope that you guys understand for the first two points. Now we proceed to the third point, which is the income level. Yeah, um, we just talk about Malaysian income level. What happened to the performance of Ringgit Malaysia when the Malaysia income level improved or increased yeah? from one level to another level. So when Malaysian income level increased, so our people, our Malaysian are, of course, will demand for more import goods and services. For example, we will demand more import goods from US market. That's why you can see here, the demand curve shift to the right. What happened to the supply? It's only stagnant because we are not talking about the US income level. Yeah. So now you can see D1 and S1, it's prove that ringgit malaysia against usd is 2.50 so when we move to d2 to s1 it will slightly increase from 2.5 to 2.8 against us dollar so as conclusion when the malaysian income level increase yeah it actually can give a impact a bad impact to our performance of ringgit malaysia our ringgit malaysia will depreciate Okay, now we proceed to the uh, last two points, which is uh, government 
policy and also expectation. Now we proceed to the last two points, which is a government policy and also expectation. Okay. There is no illustration. I would like to explain about the government policy. Back in the year 1980s, our Tun, our beloved Prime Minister, which is our Tun Mahathir Muhammad, always announced uh, a lot of campaign, for example, Belilah Barang Buatan Malaysia and Infla Sisifar. Through that campaign, our Malaysian aware and alert that what happened in our economic situations. For example, Belilah Barang Buatan Malaysia. When there is a campaign Belilah Barang Buatan Malaysia, so our Malaysian alert that we should stop to buy all the import goods and services. By doing that, the, the government actually encouraged the Malaysian citizen to buy the local product. So that will actually uh, reduce the demand for more foreign currencies. And actually that we can bring the Ringgit Malaysia to appreciate slightly better. Yeah.